blocking old fashioned felt hats and trying to give them kind of a current flair. Meg Patty happily touts she's gone mad. Actually, mad is just an age old hat making term, which helps describe her now year and a half old venture into crafting fancy felt hats. Whether it's a big floppy brim or, you know, something short and crisp, I think this is absolutely riddled with folklore type of craft. Meg is totally self taught as a hat maker or hatter, as it's called in the business. You essentially just keep working it and keep working it, and if you have to stretch it more, you stretch it more. From inside her tiny old port studio, she stretches, steams, and pretty much muscles the felt materials into shape. It is physical. It requires a lot of strength. You've got to stretch the felt, and you've got to, you know, mold it and stretch it, and it's, yeah, it requires a fair amount of strength. She likes to say she's creating old, timely artisanship. Like a painting, each of her designs is a fashionable work of art, a statement of sorts. Every single felt is a blank canvas, and I get to express myself in an artistic manner, but also in a lot of ways kind of embolden people to be confident and be themselves. Most of Meg's hats are custom orders, though she has to admit she's never entirely certain how each will look when it's finished. There's always a vision to start with, but in the end she always allows the material to dictate the direction. They kind of take you on a journey and it take on a life of their own and then at some point you arrive and it's like, that's the hat. A modern hat cut from an old fashioned traditional style. That is a mad patty. And the market, she says, is a great fit. I think people are starting to embrace hats again and it's, that's perfect, it's awesome. And by the way, aside from the Alice in Wonderland reference, the term Mad Hatter dates back to the 1800s when hat makers were said to go mad from the mercury used in hat making materials. Mercury is no longer used.